This is Matthew Donald to let you know that I have a Patreon. At patreon.com slash Matthew Donald, there you can find bonus content for my shows, The Rit Wit and Paleo Bites. My two shows, bonus content for both of them. This month we're talking about Zero Ranger. Zero Ranger. Do you not know what Zero Ranger is? It's what Power Rangers came from. All the stock footage of the fights came from Zero Ranger. Zero Ranger. You should check it out. Link is in the description. Thank you for your support. And have a wonderful day! (coughs) I'm so sorry. Roar, growl, snarl, bellow. Welcome to Paleo Bites, the podcast stinkier than ginkgo stew. My name is Matthew Donald, and each week I and a rotating series of guest co-hosts talk about and rate a genus of prehistoric animal, be it dinosaur, mammal, arthropod, and so on. This week I'm joined by someone who's been bugging me to do more prehistoric plants, and thus I have granted her that wish. It's <laughs> Natasha Crack. How are you? Hey, I'm doing well. Uh, good to hear. Good to hear. Yeah. Sometimes, I, you know, at the beginning of every episode I say a genus of prehistoric animal, but sometimes we don't talk about animals. <laughs> There's been a few where you haven't talked about animals. We talked about that one, the fungus... Yes. The, the prototaxites. And we talked about Luca, the last universal common ancestor. For it's the last life, the common ancestor of all other life, so it wasn't an animal, technically. It's probably some sort of bacteria. And probably. then we got this. Uh, I've also learned that um, if this show's still going on in 2025, so this show comes out every Tuesday, right? Yes. To, uh, on In 2025, April Fool's Day is a Tuesday. Oh, of course. <laughs> so... I need to come up with something good for them. <laughs> Watch this is just like something that's not only not an animal, but also alive. Like <laughs> the dandelion. <laughs> I mean, dandelions are interesting little plants. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Pale Bites. For this week, we're talking about the dandelion. <laughs> Let's write the dandelion one out of 65 million. <laughs> <laughs> Although we are talking about a flower today, so. But before we get to that, uh, let's see. Hmm. Okay, what can I ask you that's... Dinosaur related. Ah. I forgot to bring my water inside the studio and my throat is like parched. <laughs> well, if you want, I can babble a little bit about my garden. Okay, yes, go ahead. Babble about your garden while I go try and swallow some spit. Here. <laughs> okay. So, yes, I am working on a vegetable garden. My mm. mom and I are putting it together. We are growing speckled acorn squash. Yes. Jaradel pumpkins. Ooh. Uh, we are growing some green beans. Yes. Uh, that are a bush bean. Oh, yes. We are growing, uh, we're trying to grow a couple varieties of onion. Oh, okay. And See, most of these we're I didn't also know. doing a little bit of peas. Most of these I didn't know there was different varieties, like the type of pumpkin. I thought it was just pumpkin. Oh, no, no, no. Jaradels are an Australian New Zealand variety. Oh, ah, okay. On the outside, they're blue gray. Their skin is thin. They are, but it is dense. They oh. are terrible for jack o' lanterns. I was gonna say, but they're blue though. That'd be a On cool jack o' lantern. That'd be a cool jack o' lantern though if it was blue. But I guess you could take a normal punk and spray paint it on. <laughs> they're terrible for jack o' lanterns yeah. because the flesh is too thick. Yeah, that makes sense. Several inches. Yeah. I grew them last year. Had two successful pumpkins, and my mom decided we need more of those plants. <laughs> we need more pumpkin. Yeah. They are slightly sweeter than your average Halloween pumpkin. Okay. Uh, they even smell different when you break into them. Yeah, so a pumpkin pie made from them would oh, be... Oh, it was amazing. Oh, okay. Uh, my mom wants to make some from the leftover from last year. Would it be a blue pie then? No, the inside is actually a bright red orange. Oh, okay. The, out, the outer skin is the blue gray. Okay, that, that's, okay, that's all right then. That's really cool to look at. Okay, well that's neat. And then the speckled acorn squash are, in a way, your typical acorn squash, but they're uh, green, white, and orange speckled. Oh, wow. And again, slightly sweeter than your average acorn squash. Yes, yes. I came across them at a farmer's market, and my mom decided that we were going to save some seeds and plant them. Ooh. And you can grow produce from stuff you get at the supermarket, by the way. Yes, I could see that. So, uh... I mean, those are mostly real fruits. (laughs) uh, Yeah, I mean, I've done it with other squash. Yeah. Get your typical acorn squash from the supermarket, take a few seeds, plant them. They'll grow. Nice. 
You can technically deal with tomatoes. It's a bit harder. Right, right. Tomatoes are finicky little bugs. Yeah, they don't come from trees, though, right? They no, come they're from vines, right? Yeah, yeah, they are. And they're a member of the nightshade family. Oh, uh, okay. You can do it with bell peppers. Ooh. Uh, if you like bell peppers, peppers are a little finicky to start, but once you get them going... I do like me a good pepper, like... What is it like? Sometimes okay, so I've been doing Uber Eats a lot lately. Uh, not not ordering out. That's too expensive for me. But I've been delivering for it. Although I guess I could order. I probably should support the company that, <laughs> or support the people working for the people that I'm doing uh, so, working for. Uh, but so, uh, a lot of times when people order pizzas, there's some where they put like a certain pepper on it, and it smells so good. So there's a couple different varieties that I've seen on pizzas. I've seen bell peppers. Yeah. I've seen pepperoncinis. Yeah. I've seen banana peppers. I think it's banana peppers that's the smell. Probably. They are extremely fragrant. Oh, God. Go to your local greenhouse and get a plant that's relatively easy to care for once the plant is established. I might go get some pizza after this and put some (laughs) banana peppers on (laughs) it. Uh, well, yes, that's my babbling about my garden. Yes, indeed. And maybe you can plant some ninjaganthus in there. <laughs> and speaking of which, <laughs> God, after a bit, these segues are just, I mean, not that they're ever good, <laughs> but eventually it's just like I'm not even trying anymore. And not trying as in like, not not trying as in it's, it's effortless. No, it's, <laughs> like, I don't know. It means Nanjing flower. It's part of the uh, part in the world in China where it was fr- found. So, um, Type, it is potentially an angiosperm, which is a technical term for flowering plants, but it could also be more related to conifers. Oh. So it might not be a flower. We'll get to it. Uh, size, flower sized. How big are flowers? I guess it depends on the flower. Let's it really s- does. Let's say chrysanthemum size. Because <laughs> I just wanted to say chrysanthemum. <laughs> I mean, chrysanthemums have some nice, moderate sized flowers. Yeah. I just, I just Popular like in the fall? I just like that name, chrysanthemum. It's so needlessly <laughs> long. <laughs> It's like you got rose, and you got daisy, and you got... Uh, I mean, they are called uh, mums for short. I guess that's true. Oh, I guess that makes sense. But you got poppies. <laughs> and then you got chrysanthemums. <laughs> uh, diet, sunlight. <laughs> that's the thing. I always like doing these like type size diet location, blah, 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 for everything we do on this show, even if it's not like a normal part of the show. <laughs> so time, mid-Jurassic, 174 million years ago. Nice. That's really, really early if this is a flower. So That would be really cool if it was a flower. Yeah. Location, China. It was described in 2018. Pop culture appearances, your average book on Jurassic horticulture. <laughs> Which is to say there are no pop culture references on this, featuring this thing. Ah. Uh, for as long as I've known about prehistoric life, I've known the origins of certain organisms that date back to specific times. Sharks first evolved in the Devonian. Dinosaurs first evolved in the Triassic. Flowers first evolved in the Cretaceous. Grass first evolved in the Paleogene. And humans first evolved in the Pleistocene. Easy peasy. Well, it turns out evolution is a fickle thing. It doesn't care when we silly humans have records of when things first started. For instance, we now know that grass actually first evolved in the Cretaceous. Well, isn't that interesting? Although it was mostly confined to India. So some grass and some dinosaurs did mix. I mean, that's a thing. Yeah, I, I thought for sure. It was like, you know, when you're a kid, you think, oh, grass and dinosaurs are a thing. Then you learn, oh, no, actually grass didn't evolve yet. And, then, and now, like, oh, apparently some places it did. <laughs> <laughs> Consistency. That's all I asked for, but you can't get that with science. Uh, no, it's never consistent, yeah, especially you know, with evolution. Yeah, and also, you know, it's just like you, our understanding grows, so we got to change with it. Um, so, uh, as it turns out with this particular specimen, flowers might have gone way back earlier than we initially believed. Enter Ninjanthus. Ninjanthus. I don't know how... Nanjinganthus, I think is how it's pronounced. <laughs> a fossilized plant discovered in China that, should it truly be classified as an angiosperm, a flower, would extend the first appearance of flowering plants back a whopping 50 million years. That's impressive. I mean, that would be incredible if it was, because flowers are a highly specialized yes, they structure. Yes, they are. They are, like, it has sections with prominent ridges like floral veins and partic- prob- possibly an oviary, which in botanical terms, and as well as in uh, normal animal terms, stirs the reproductive part of the female flower. Um, although, uh, naturally, there are some skeptics of this. Of course. Uh, some have suggested it looks more like a conifer than a flower, with the ridges instead being pollen cone scales. Okay. Uh, the fossil's poorly preserved, so it's difficult to tell. 
So we wait until further evidence appears. Yes, let's cast a vote, though, no, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say it's a flower simply because it's cool. I'm, I'm... That would be cool if it was a flower. Although here's some evidence against it being a flower, though. <laughs> uh, well, this is not really against it. This is just more like suggesting that, I don't know, well, maybe it could have been, but I don't know. Uh, for what it's worth, most of the famous insects with relationships with flowers, such as bees and butterflies, first appear in the fossil record much later than in Jang 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 Lep, Nanjinganthus. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, bees first evolved in the late Cretaceous, okay, and and butterflies first evolved in, in the late Paleocene, which is after the dinosaurs. Which means, okay, you heard of the story uh, "Sound of Thunder," a short story. I think so. Yeah, it's the one where someone goes back to dinosaur times, and it was, as they leave, someone else is running for president. Then they go back in dinosaur times. They step on a butterfly accidentally, and then go back. And it turns out someone else is running for president <laughs> because of that. <laughs> That is weird. It's the butter. It's the origin of the term, the butterfly effect, uh, which is that that one little thing can change so much. I mean, it's interesting to think about that. But yeah. the, there are possibilities of other pollinators that we simply didn't know about. Right, exactly. But that's just now basically that means okay, that couldn't have been possible because he encounters a T Rex in this short story. <laughs> T Rex and butterflies did not mix apparently. And that th makes sense. That's, that makes sense for a short story to get that wrong. But Walking with Dinosaurs also got this wrong. <laughs> In the final episode with well, T-Rex... here's the thing. When was Walking with Dinosaurs made? 99. Did we know about that? I don't know. Maybe, hopefully we didn't. Because in the final episode, Walking with Dinosaurs, it shows a butterfly. Oh. So, not I'm, right. Yep, by, by today's standards. Nope. Uh, wasps, though, uh, first evolved in the Jurassic... That makes sense. If you know modern wasps, they are uh, actually quite carnivorous. Yes. And Some of them have flower have relationships with flowers, though. So. so, fun little picnic tip. If you're in an area where you're getting too many of those annoying wasps, yes. take a scrap of meat, put it in a bush far away, and suddenly your problems are gone. Really? They're more interested in that scrap of meat. They'll come and chew on that. I put that to the test at one point, even when I was at a family gathering. Yeah. We were having problems with them. I took a little scrap of ham fat, put it in a bush in the corner of where we were at. And, and yeah. Uh, you, I you'd think that attract problem. flies more than wasps, but I uh, guess. Apparently, I learned recently that wasps are actually carnivorous. Yeah. Some of them do feed on pollen, though. I've read that. Some of, the, some of them have relationships with flowers, but most of them are carnivorous. So Yes. So, for the most part, that trick can actually save your picnic. Wasps are evil, too. Yes, they are. Now, like, they're one of those few animals that has absolutely no place in the web of life. I, I'm sure I could grab an entomologist to debate yeah. that. Yeah. Like, you, took the, you plucked them out of the timeline, and the world is exactly the same. And In fact, I'd argue a little better. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, no. You're probably right. An, an entomologist... Uh, would be uh, would tell you otherwise. Not to be confused with in. Uh, wait, no. Etymologist is words. Entomologist is the study of insects. Yes. I was about to. I was about to say not to be confused with that, but I just confused it with that. <laughs> Entomologist is the study of insects. Etymology is the, the origin of words. Yes. Like how in last episode we did together, we talked about Arctodus, the short-faced bear. Now Arcto means bear, so. <laughs> Hence the word etymology. Yeah, which comes from the word bear. No. <laughs> 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 so, um, so yeah, so ninja, ninja, uh, whatever this thing is called, the the, the Jurassic flower, <laughs> Jurassic Chinese flower. Uh, it might, it's unknown whether it's a flower or not. I know when science has a certain thing, like a certain rule that they've set for the, that, based on like other things. If they see something that breaks that rule, generally at first they see that as like a fluke. And not something that really pertains to it. Which makes sense. Yeah, until there's multiple cases where So it's what needs to happen is they need to find more, more Jurassic flowers, yes. For scientists to truly believe, okay, this was a flower. True. So, like, I remember, like, in 2011, back when I was taking an astronomy class at UNC, where we went to school, there was an experiment where they had some neutrinos that they claimed went faster than light. <laughs> And this made news the world over, but my astronomy teacher was unconvinced. And considering I have not seen or heard anything from it since, I'm prone to believe it was indeed a miscalculation. I would have pro be inclined to agree. Yeah. It's weird that as there's As far as we know, the speed of light is the universal constant. Yes. But then again, we did once believe that about the speed of sound as that's well. That's true, that's true. 
That's true. I mean, yeah, we yeah, like that's the thing. That's why I like. Uh, have you ever seen uh, the Cosmos? Yes. Yeah. There was the old one, and there was the new one that uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson was the announcer for. Yes, and I'm he, familiar with the new one. Uh, yeah, the new one's good. He made a point with it that I thought was really good that he kept saying that we know of. Well, and he that's was what's open. great about it is that we know of. Yeah, he's open to it changing. I think I remember distinctly him saying, like, light is the fastest thing in the universe that we know of. And uh, what's nice so. is just, again, the idea of remaining open to maybe there's something out there that is faster that we just can't detect. Yeah, exactly. There's so much that we don't know out there Yeah, that there are things that could change our understanding of physics evolution you name it you know how like uh there's a there's obviously a limit to how cold things get because cold is the absence of heat yes so if you have zero heat it's called absolute zero did you know that based on our current understanding of physics there could potentially be a maximum heat really so uh you know you you, are you aware what a plank is p-l-a-n-c-k yes okay like it's, uh, for those the listeners that don't know, it is the smallest distance possible that in our current understanding of physics. I don't know why that's the smallest. Theoretically, it could get infinitely smaller, but I guess not. Um, but so, for some reason, that is the smallest distance in physics, to the point where Planck is also a measurement of time, which is the amount of time that it takes light to travel one Planck, <laughs> which is theoretically I'm... the shortest possible unit of time. That's interesting. Now, this uh, potential hottest possible temperature is like 109 or something, no nillion degrees. Interesting. And the reason why that is the hottest is because that is the temperature where the wavelengths of energy from it are one plank in length. Oh, that's cool. So that's why that's the hottest, as far as we know. Okay, I love that, as far as we know. Yes, so... And that, that's the thing that the Cosmos did a lot, too. And that's the thing. <laughs> did you know Seth MacFarlane was one of the producers of that show? No, I, I did not. This is actually really cool. You know how a lot of people say separate art from the artist? Yes. And how and a lot of times it's like, oh, it's a it's an art that I really like, but the artist is full of crap and whatever. Yes. This, Seth MacFarlane is someone who I view in the opposite direction. Generally, I don't like his works. Like, I don't. I find them painfully unfunny. Sometimes he really hits like uh-huh. his humor does, but most of the time I just find his humor just like very like eh, and kind of uh-huh. whatever. I don't, I don't really like any of his works, but he as a person seems really cool because he was a huge fan of the Cosmos back in uh, the 80s and whatever. That was a long running sort of thing Nice that they had. And so when he heard that Neil deGrasse Tyson wanted to do a reboot of it, uh-huh. he managed to get funding for it th- thanks to his clout from Family Guy and all oh, the other that is stu- awesome. Awesome stuff from Fox, and therefore got Fox to show it on TV rather than, like, say, Discovery Channel or something. To get yeah, no, more that's wi- really good, though. To get wide sp- more widespread attention to it. And I think that's really cool. Like, and, good on him. And say what you will about Fox, but they're nationally known and more generally available. Yeah, exactly. They are. Like, yeah, so, that yeah, I thought that was really cool of him. So, good on him. <laughs> that, that really is a good thing. And you got to love when artists are like, that scientist is really cool. Yeah. They like, have a good idea. I want that idea on screen. And that's just cool. Like, he used the success he had got with his dumb shows that were really <laughs> successful and helped this show with it and probably gave it a bigger budget and, like... Probably did. Yeah, so... I mean, the special effects in that show are spectacular. Yes. Anyways, <laughs> let's let's <laughs> write let's write Nanjing Ganthus one out of sixty five million. Okay, if it's a flower, fifty million. Yes. Uh, if it's a conifer, five million. <laughs> yeah, I mean conifers are old. <laughs> yeah, like so it's so, it's gonna be in the gray area. Yeah. I don't think we can give it a solid rating until we know exactly what it is. Yeah. So I, I'm going to say if like that's the two ratings. One if it's a flower, one if it's not. So if it's a conifer, yeah. Eh, it's Five million, and that's also kind of generous. Like honestly, <laughs> I mean, conifers were everywhere. But. Yeah, but if it's a flower, yeah, holy, f- <laughs> I think we need to jump it. I think we need to jump it up to fifty or fifty-five million yeah. because right. that just that changes cr- the timeline. It, it, it changes our understanding of yeah evolution. So. Yeah. All right. Well, that's it for this week. If you want to get a hold of the show, you can contact me at mattd at matthewdoncreator.com for any general questions to any of the co-hosts. 
Uh, we can learn more about the banter between us. Like, what goes on now? <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe sometime we'll arrange a live show. Oh, that'd be fun. I've always wanted to do that. I tried to contact Dinosaur Rage. I want. I also need to contact... I, 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 there was this bar called Paleo Joe's. It's in Lakewood. And I learned about them just when the pandemic hit. So I couldn't... Well, with things opening back up, let's see if they've survived. That's the thing. They might have gone out of business, and I hope to God they haven't. So, Because I would love to do a live show there. Um, anyways, you can follow me on social media at Methadon Creator on Facebook, at Methadon64 on Twitter, and Methadon64 on Instagram. Uh, also, I have a book series on Amazon Megazoic available for print and Kindle. There could have been a Ninjinganthus in there, but I didn't put one there because I didn't know about this at the time. <laughs> Also, to be fair, this was described in 2018, which was the year that I finished writing the last book in the series. So No, but we did stick hints at a magnolia in there. Yes, we did. We did. Um, I remember you drew a flower on someone's uh, head, on someone's one of the dinosaur's ears or something on the side of their face. I thought that was really on nice On the side touch. of their headset. That was a nice touch. <laughs> um, well, you did mention that she was more Southern Belle type. Yes, she was. And she- I actually went and researched paleo flowers for that, and... Found that magnolias dated back to the same time as that dinosaur. They absolutely do. So that's pretty so cool. So it was my little nod. I like that a lot. I remember for the one with uh, the the German uh, shock person, like she had a she had a barrel that you drew flowers on too. I think <laughs> I forgot why. Remember that? Yes. But, yeah. There were a couple where you gave me hints that they had some accent, and yeah, rather than ignore it altogether, I gave nods to the culture. Right. Like you had a gargoylosaurus that you said had a Scottish accent, so there was a thistle involved. No, I'm glad you did those little touches. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, anyways, also, I have another podcast called The Rit Wits, where two twits talk about writing slash writing. Basically writing. It's a writing show. Uh, this this show gets more downloads than it does. That's why I've been t- talking about that show on this show, to try and get people more to that show. Although Although I'd like people to both shows a lot. Speaking of which, subscribe to my Patreon <laughs> at <laughs> patreon.com slash Matthew Donald. Uh, so, yeah. Anyways, all right, that's it for this week. And as we say at the end of every episode of Paleo Bites, happy gardening. Yeah, like flowers don't make noise. Happy gardening. <laughs> happy gardening, indeed. Try at least one plant, everybody. Yeah, and that's, this has been our Paleo Botany episode. Whatever Laura Dern's character in Jurassic Park was. Is that even a real profession? If there are any paleobotanists listening to the show, email us at mattd at <laughs> <laughs> All right, bye.